and welcome to Profiles. I'm your host, Brian McKeon. On today's show, we'll be speaking with the folks from Integral Arts. They've produced some fantastic films over the past few years, one of which was recently screened at the annual Cannes Film Festival in France. I've had the pleasure of working with them on one or two 48-hour film projects as an actor. With me in the studio are Integral Arts founder and director Barry Gribble, actor and producer Joy Haynes, and cinematographer and composer Kevin Good. Barry is an award-winning DC filmmaker and founder of Integral Arts Productions. His recent spec TV pilot, Code Word Secret, was screened at the New York Television Festival, where he was handpicked for a mentorship with Phil Rosenthal, the, direct, the creator of Everybody Loves Raymond. He also worked as a writer and producer on the new Animal Planet show, The A-List. Joy Haynes works regularly in commercials in both on-camera and as voiceover talent in films from Richmond to New York. Most recently, she has ventured into the producing arena and has produced short films and television pilots for Integral Arts. Kevin Good was director of photography, major collaborator, and often co-writer on Integral Arts web sitcom, Buddy Jackson. He also co-created the prospective TV pilot, Code Word Secret, along with Barry, and is a vital co-director and co-creator of Integral Arts projects. Before we even talk to them, though, we want to show you a taste of their work. He said, around back. Johnny. guys no seriously it's Chinese Kalishnikov Johnny he's Russian no 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 you're mispronouncing it it's Karishnikov no it's I'm not I'm pretty sure it's Chinese it's not oh where are you going pal I think okay do you speak Spanish uh no I yeah I know Realmente, me tengo que ir. Mi mamá está muy enferma. What? Uh, something about a house, explosives. I need backup in the back. I got a runner out here. There's explosives in the house. Well, I'll turn that no, I'll turn that hey, Johnny, don't really? touch that. It could be a detonator. Oh, come on, it's a cell phone. No, 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 Johnny, no, no, listen to me. Don't touch it. I know phone. anything. No, no, I know no, cell phones. No, 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 Hola. Barry, Joy, and Kevin, welcome to Profiles. I just want you to know I'm going to think twice before I call anybody on a cell phone again. <laughs> Much less, really you know, that's probably a great promo for uh, turn your phones off in the theater. Right. I mean, you should think about selling it that way. Barry, tell me a little about what a little bit about what went into making that. That was that was top top notch right there. Uh, into that scene, that was the scene from uh, Code Word Secret, the pilot mm -hmm. we did for uh, the New York Television Festival, and. Um, it was, uh, you know, our best attempt at what I'd call low-budget action film, which is, it's a little challenging yeah. <laughs> to work around. Shooting on the streets around people who, uh, you know, are calling the police on us. I remember but screening, <laughs> I remember when you had the screening at your place, and I, I watched, I'm like, this is like television, this is like high quality. It was the kind of thing I wouldn't picture on, you know, any reputable network and, you know, on the internet and everything. Um, the, the things that you're doing with Integral Arts, uh, you're part of a community, a part of a movement where things don't have to go to Hollywood first. They can come up, show up on the internet, and you can do it from anywhere, which I find outstanding. I mean, especially since the price of digital cameras and a lot of equipment has come down. Right. And uh, it's obvious that, you know, you guys have the talent amongst all of you to do this type of thing. Thank you. And uh, I'd like to ask Joy here uh, about a little bit about production. I mean, uh, you, you've done some producing. You wear a lot of hats, I know that for sure. Um, what do you find, is there any particular challenge you find in being a producer? Um, when you I, have to flip over to well, that Well, I mode? mean, it's challenging in that there's a lot to always keep track of, but I think my personality is sort of well suited to that. Um, and the thing I like about producing is because of my acting background and also because I'm a lawyer, it's sort of the perfect way for me to combine those two halves of my um, life that 
are normally so separated. So I, it feels natural to me. Well, as a producer, I know I've done a little bit of it myself, but there's a lot of writing heard, and I know that, you know, from your job, you know, being being in the being an attorney and doing a lot of things, having to keep track of a lot of stuff, you know, it's a good fit, just like you said, mm -hmm. having to keep up with a lot of different things and oversee a lot. It's yeah. a lot of work. And Kevin, I know you've done fantastic cinematography, Thank you. filmmaking, you know, writing and everything. Is there any one of them that you gravitate toward more than the others? Not really. I, I think the whole thing is, is one big creative process to me. So I used to be, like Barry, I used to be, uh, not used to be, but I am a, a big musician, but music used to be sort of my focus. And we've been sort of making this transition into the visual arts, television, and filmmaking, and it's just the creative outlet for me. And I act some too, and I like to write, and I like to do cinematography, and, and all of that is just the, the, the creative outlet. It's just getting... I don't know, creating something. Color correct. Yeah, yeah, we do a lot. Everything. We do a lot. <laughs> yeah, from what I've seen of Vinical Arts, everyone pulls together to do whatever needs to be done when it needs to be done. Is you know, as the old adage goes, no complaining, no explaining, just <laughs> make it happen. And you guys have made it happen. You know, uh, I've seen the progress and the growth over the past four years since I've known you, and it's just been outstanding. Let's go to another clip. We want to see a lot of this, a lot of the fruit of your work. So tell us a little bit about the next one. Can you do that for me, Joy? Oh, sure. This yeah. was a presentation pilot that we did for Fox Television Studios, now currently called Saving Corporate America, um, sort of a half-hour sitcom style, but with a little bit of a darker sense of humor, I'd say. So All right. This is a courtroom scene. Right. Let's take it away. You killed him, didn't you? Yes, I killed him. He was going to tell everyone. Objection! What? My client is an idiot. What are you doing? Well, I didn't want to, but I was going to get Shut fired. Shut up already! The plaintiff's rest. Uh, the, the defense waves his arms in amazement. The judge bangs his gavel. Would you like to stop this now and say? Absolutely not. The jury's not going to buy any of this. Are you buying this? Mm-hmm. And you killed a man. Yeah, I did. Yeah, oh, yeah, I did. Whatever. Great. Perfect. You just blew a first-class closing argument, baby. I hope you're happy. Well, it does lift a burden, yeah. Mr. Grange, did you know your client committed this crime and put him on his stand anyway? No, I did not. As a matter of fact, I am offended to be in the same room as a man so vile and, and self-serving. Strangely enough, I know exactly what you feel. Barry, that was great. Can you tell me a little more about that? Oh, as Joy said, it was a half-hour pilot we did. Um, that was a, the climax scene in which our uh, anti-hero was frustrated in his quest to uh, save corporate America. Mm, it must be tough work. Uh, you know, you have great actors in, in, in everything I've seen. I mean, the writing, the dialogue, and also the cinematography are two things that I look at most when I'm viewing something. But of course, acting is good. What do you look for in an actor when they come in front of you and read that side? Um, acting, the most important thing for us is that when they sit down across from us, it seems like we're just having a conversation with them. That it's natural. If somebody walked into the room while, while we were auditioning them, they would just think we were talking and would be surprised at the end when they're like, oh, you're reading that off, off paper? I didn't realize. And that helps you yeah. see underneath the, the true self, and that's, that's the easiest thing to work with, I would imagine, rather than saying, put this mask on for a little while. Right, you right, know? exactly. And so we went through a lot. We auditioned probably 300 people yeah. for that. Yeah, actually, over the course been. of several months, we auditioned a lot of people, and mm. we wanted to keep it local as much as possible. We yeah. were, we didn't want to have to go up to New York. We knew we had the local talent here, and we right. were able to audition union and non-union actors and work under a union agreement ultimately, mm -hmm. which allowed us to really access a big, a broader pool of actors. I think there's there's two things. There's what what Barry said, which is we want them to we want them to seem like they're just having a conversation. And actually, one of the things I like to do when we're auditioning is, if possible, be reading the other side with who's ever auditioning, because I know the person who just sort of starts talking to me and convinces me in that moment that I'm just talking to them and having a conversation, is 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 somebody that we're looking for for the style of stuff that we're doing, which is a filmic kind of actor, you know, acting for the screen, not acting for the stage. Um, and then the other thing that we're always interested for is people that make our lives easy as writers. Um, and that is somebody who brings like a really strong characterization to the page and maybe finds jokes that we didn't necessarily write there and makes us laugh and makes us think of the stuff in new ways. You know, um, the, the, the toughest thing for us as writers is constantly keeping things interesting, constantly keeping things funny and engaging. 
And any actor that comes through there and helps us with that in any way, shape, or form, we are very keen to, to keep close at hand. You know? um, so, but, but yeah, we saw probably, over the course of the year for our various projects, we saw 500 people, 1,000 people. I don't know how many people we saw. We saw a lot of actors. You stopped counting actors. after a while. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. But so, and that's one thing also is we always have open auditions. And so we end up using a lot of the same people every time, but we also always want to see new people and not limit ourselves. Right. Well, you know, I'm really, I'm really delighted that we're having a chance here to see the fruit of all this work that's it's so wonderful. And why don't we go into the next one? This is uh, a part. Uh, who would like to introduce this one? I can tell you about this. This is uh, Lizzie Strata. It's a short clip from it. This was a 48-hour film fest uh, movie. Those of you who don't know what the 48-hour film fest is, it's uh, you know this as well, Brian. Yeah. But uh, teams compete to make a movie in 48 hours. Uh, you get a few criteria that you have to use. S Friday night you start it. Sunday night you have to turn in the finished product. And for this one, we got a little uh, excessively ambitious. We tried to do a classical adaptation, period piece, musical, with an original score shot almost entirely on green screen, all in the 48 hours, with just Barry and myself as our post-production team. Right. And uh, it was very difficult. And here it is. It let's, very see, close. let's see Lizzie, yeah. <laughs> remember, it's a secret. I remember. I bet you did. Okay. <laughs> We're almost here. What's it gonna be? Are you gonna have sex? Or are you gonna save the world? I'm going to save the world! All right! All right. Well, that makes me want to sing, especially in front of a green screen. You know, <laughs> some of the audience out there might not, might not be familiar with what a green screen is, and I'll let you do the honors of telling them what it is. Or, Kevin, you can... Or I'll do the honor, since you apparently the honors. I'm the compositing expert. Yeah. Uh, green screen is just a solid color backdrop, like the weatherman, where uh, after the fact we can replace the background with uh, whatever we want, uh, much like the weatherman and his weather map. But uh, we shot that on green screen, which is tricky because in the time frame that we had to do all the processing and everything to it, it there was a lot of caffeine involved. I had, I had bought uh, caffeinated gum and caffeinated right. soap. soap. To get me through that 48-hour <laughs> film festival. Caffeinated soap. Caffeinated <laughs> soap. Yes. Yeah. Can I get diet soap anywhere? I, I don't know. They, <laughs> they sell it now. Yeah. They do make uncaffeinated soap, too. Do they? So really? Yeah. Yeah. Good, good. Well, you know, that's for those times who just don't want the same kind of kick, yeah, exactly. I would yeah. imagine. Yeah. Now, um, there's, another, there's another video that we'd like to show, a little clip. This is Cumbio Takedown. Did I say that right? Cumbio Takedown? <laughs> yes? Wow. Uh, Absolutely. Anyway, it, this is the one that went to Cannes. This is the one that was, uh, you know, the, I don't know if crowning achievement is the right word, but it certainly feels fitting. This is wonderful, wonderful. I, I got a chance to see it at the 48-hour film project last year, and I was really impressed with it. And I want to show the audience this small clip from it. Great. I know you don't want to wear these bracelets for the next 10 years, so give it up, champ. I didn't tell you. So you really think you wouldn't do me? I work with you. I don't want to think about it. <laughs> yeah, whatever. I mean, what if we didn't work together? You would totally want to do me then, right? I, I'd do you. How can I tell what if this or that? We work together. End of story. But you gotta know. I mean, I know. I would do you in a heartbeat if I knew that I could get away with it. So you tell me you don't want some of this? It's not that. I don't know. Maybe. Sometimes I feel like you're not very sensitive. Not very sensitive? Okay, okay, all right, I know. I'll Shut the f up! What do you mean that I'm not very sensitive? Barry, that was a great bit of filmmaking. Can you tell, that thing won a slew of awards at the 48 Hour Film Project, can you tell me what they were. I what they were. It. Yeah. <laughs> it won uh, Best Film for Washington, D.C. Actually, all these for Washington, D.C. It won Best Film, Best Acting, Best Script, and Audience Choice Award. 
Wow. We actually shared best script with Lonnie Martin, who wrote uh, Women's Studies. Right. Well, it was amazing. I mean, it's worthy of Khan. I mean, you know, it, when I saw it, like I said before, everything I see you guys put out is just top notch, just quality work, top quality work. Uh, I also want to move on to something else, another, uh, another video clip from something that Joy produced. Joy was also a uh, star of. And it's called Trist, and I will ask you just a couple of little questions about it afterwards. Do you want to give any sort of introduction to it? Um, well, it's just this is just a excerpt. Um, it's well, I guess not. It, it, okay, you well, can't really tell much about it because it sort of has a twist at the end. Yeah, we won't we'll, we'll talk but, about we won't talk about it. But I'll ask. I think I'll. And come in the back end, you can watch all of these on a website, which I'm sure we'll give later. And yeah. Because I don't want to give anything away, and you can watch the full version of all these sort of six minute. That's right. Shorts. That's right. So. Why don't we take a look at Trist? sent this over. Really? I know that you don't normally accept this kind of thing. Thank you, Tucker. Um, the bottle? You can leave it. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am? I don't usually dine with strangers. I think you'll find I'm pretty charming, actually. You're going to have to try harder than that. It's very beautiful to look at. And uh, uh, one thing I like to do is dissect beauty. That sounds kind of scary, actually. But what I'd like to do is ask. <laughs> All righty. What I'd like to do is, uh, that's the title for a new film, right? Um, what I would like to do is ask a little bit about the location. That's one thing that I noticed first. So either of you would like to speak to that. Just tell me a little bit about the locations used in this film. Joy? Interest. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Well, we had a couple three different main locations, but that the clip you just saw was um, at Metzaluna Restaurant down on 19th Street, downtown DC. And um, I think the interesting, one of the most interesting things about that shot was the whole, um, the lighting on that took hours to set up because we had a whole, it was all one shot, you know, the whole walking shot on a steady cam, which Kevin shot and um, um, we had, some great people working on, on lighting, Janine Sides and um, Yuri Zavakovsky. Zavoisky. <laughs> Yuri Zavoisky. <laughs> yeah. And um, Kevin. Yeah. yeah, that shot, that, that clip actually came in halfway through the shot, but it's this long steady cam tracking shot that was actually the first steady cam shot I've ever attempted. And we had a, a, a restaurant full of extras, and we were a ton behind schedule, and I was running like a 101 fever that I didn't realize until later. <laughs> <laughs> um, a showbiz. Yeah. Oh, well, by the way, for education footloop purposes, what is steady cam? Steadicam, uh, you guys might have seen these uh, running along the sidelines of uh, ball games, but these are the people that wear a vest with this articulated space shuttle looking arm and the camera floating around on the end of it. Uh, that's what a Steadicam it's is. It's very heavy and it, <laughs> allows you to, it allows you to get very smooth sort of floating uh, shots. Um, it was used for the first time in Rocky. Uh, as he runs up the stairs in Philadelphia for, at the uh, at the uh, Philadelphia, Climax. what you call it? I don't know. City Hall? City Hall. City Hall, thank you. Yeah. Rocky City Hall running up the stairs. That was the first steady cam shot, uh, the first famous steady cam shot in a movie. There was another one, but. My first yeah. encounter with the steady cam was pretty funny. I actually did some extra work for, uh, uh, what was it, Runaway Bride. And it's like the first oh. time I saw it, I thought it looked like something from Alien. You know, I was like, yeah. whoa, whoa. <laughs> Oh my God, I was like, yeah. It's really liberating though. You get to it do is. a lot. Yeah. 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 It's like gymnastics meets uh, cinematography. You know, you can mm. do all kinds of crazy things. Yeah. Right, right. It is, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Um, the other thing, yeah, the other thing about Trist is that out, out of all of those that we did, that's certainly one that we sort of took more time with. We were going for more of a cinematic look. We filled, filled the joint with extras. We had, I don't know, it, you know, a lot of our other stuff is more of that 48-hour paradigm of, of just like, get it done, get it done, get it done. Mm -hmm. Although we did shoot Tristan a weekend. But we also. did shoot it in a, we did shoot it it was, a weekend. 
Not it, as it was still, not as we usually shoot, <laughs> you know, for Buddy Jackson, the, the web sitcom we did, we were shooting 15 script pages per day. Wow. And on this one, we shot two script pages per yeah. day. Yeah. yeah. And there and wasn't was, a whole lot of dialogue either. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so. And it was also one of our few non-comedies. And so mm -hmm. it was fun to kind of you know, break out of the mold. You, almost everything we do is comedic in some manner. Right. And that one. Or is attempting to be comedic yeah. in <laughs> some manner. And who knows if it ever succeeds. But exactly. Right. Well, you know, you got to, what is it? It's like the baseball analogy. You got to make a few strikes to hit a few home runs, I guess, you know. Yeah. If you want to do Absolutely. cracked eggs, you know, omelets, whatever. <laughs> but I did, uh, you know, got to break a few omelets to uh, eggs to make omelets or whatever. <laughs> anyway, I did have a, you know, I did enjoy watching Buddy Jackson too. I watched that and uh, tell the audience a little bit about what Buddy Jackson is about or what 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 it's. Buddy Jackson is a web sitcom. Uh, we did 24 episodes, five five to seven minutes every Monday. We did uh, ended up last year, probably early spring was the, the final episode. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it was a great exercise for us in terms of you know, putting something out on a weekly basis, developing characters over a 24-episode arc, um, developing storylines to a lesser extent. It was, it was a lot of fun to do. And, uh, and it just got into a festival. Just got into the Independent Television Festival in LA in August. Which August 1st through 7th. Through 7th. You guys are festival festival royalty. I mean, I, I mean my goodness, you're all over. Uh, yeah, we, I was really pleased with that because, like I said, this is something primarily that that I did almost a year and a half or two years ago. Right. And uh, it was still stands and, out. And, and it, it, it's a um, it's a form that's rapidly evolving. Mm -hmm. And so I was actually very pleased that it still stood up and 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 was chosen for that. Yeah. So we're excited. We're and gonna the, go out for that. And they're about they run about what ten minutes each about one. Five five to seven. Five five to seven minutes. Yeah. And it's kind of like comedy to go. You know, you take it. You take <laughs> yeah. it. It's like I want to watch my weekly get my weekly fill. It reminds me, in some odd ways, it has that kind of that internet feeling of a podcast almost. And it's like you get to tune in, see what's going on with Buddy Jackson, and uh, his. It was, avails and tryouts. It, it yeah. was a great exercise, and it's one of the reasons I think that we fared relatively well in the 48-hour uh, film arena, is because I, we had the practice of producing for the five-minute form, and it's so different than producing a half-hour or an hour show. Well, that's interesting. I wanted to ask you about that because I've talked to some people who say I can't stand this 48 business. It's you know after the end, it's like you got to jam and cram everything in, then you just wonder if it's going to turn out very well. What, how do you feel? What are the advantages or disadvantages of having something you know, like you got to do quickly versus something you can you have plenty of time to do? Um, the advantage of doing the one quickly is you'll do it, and the advantage of doing the one that you have plenty of time to do is I'm still working on it that kicks one. Your butt, <laughs> so yeah. when I finish, I'll let you know. Yeah, you, you just never you never do it. The one that you have more time to it's do. It's easy to well, procrastinate. Some people don't, but it works very well. <laughs> Barry and Kevin's work style is exactly. a deadline We're oriented. Very deadline driven, and that was part of the motivation to to do Buddy Jackson because. Uh, Kevin and I both had, had shared this, and many artists out there share the, the sense of like thinking about something for so long, wanting it to be perfect before right. you shoot mm -hmm. it. And uh, I, I had hampered myself in the past by being a, too much of a perfectionist. I've sat on script for a year before, before I shot something. And um, Buddy Jackson was in part an exercise in getting past that and saying every Monday, no matter what you know? Some were better, some were worse. There was an episode going online. It's like and a regimen. I mean, you yeah. just like you gotta yeah. do and it. it, and, it do and it forced me to make those compromises that you, that you always have to make. Nothing is ever going to be as good as it could possibly be, and so it, it was a nice little exercise in in making making those compromises and still putting out a product that that I was really happy with. Right. And speaking of deadlines, we're coming close to the end of time. So quickly, tell me what's in the future for in our uh, integral arts. Integral Arts, we did the uh, pilot for Fox Television Studio, and we're just on the cusp right now of them shopping that around to networks. Uh, our fingers are crossed. Hopefully somebody's going to like it and uh, yeah. order, a, order a half hour pilot from us, which yeah. would be great. Uh, we're working uh, with a partner up in New York on some other things, pitching to the Viacom networks, and uh, we've got one that's a, a show that's moving very quickly yep. on, on that. That's another good possibility. Uh, we like. We like telling stories. We want to do it. We'd like to get paid for telling stories. So ah, that's, that's, there you that's, go. that's what we're working on right now. That's Speak, what's next. Speaking of that, tell me where we can find you on the internet. First, Barry. Yes. Integralarts.com. I N T E G R A L A R T S. Yes. We can com. See, we can see uh, your port. You know, Al almost all of that. The uh, the pilot we did for Fox, we can't 
put up there because they of course. they own it. Right. Uh, but everything else you've seen up there, you can see. Enjoy your website. Uh, my website is my name, which is www.joyhaines.com. H-A-Y-N-E-S.com. Your parents named you www. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Way ahead of their time. Way ahead of their time. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and Kevin, you've got Crisis Lab. CrisisLab.com. You can find sort of the stuff that's more my brainchild on there. I guess you can't find Trist and Buddy Jackson, sort of, because right. those were sort of like their things, but you can find links to them there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but the stuff that's more my uh, brain crack, you can find on, uh, on CrisisLab.com. Yeah, it always, it always appears that some things, like when you get in these tight moments, are a crisis. And we have the lab. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was aptly named. Yeah. Yes, yeah. thank you, Barry, Joy, and Kevin, both for coming by and sharing some t time with us today and talking about what goes into making this. It's perspiration, inspiration, but more perspiration, it sounds like. Just make sure you bring a deodorant. <laughs> and collaboration. Collaboration. And collaboration. All the Asians you nice can think part. of. Yeah. Anyway. Well, that brings this program to its conclusion. And again, I want to thank Barry, Joy, and Kevin for joining us in the studio today and for providing us with such valuable insights into such a dynamic, pioneering, useful team like Integral Arts. Remember these names because I guarantee you you're going to be seeing them more and you're going to be seeing them in the future. Until next time, I'm Brian McKeon saying thank you for joining us for this edition of Profiles. And until next time, so long. <laughs>